Look at that. Desert quartz. That's awesome. That'll go nicely in my pocket. Well, see that 350, it does really well in this stuff. Yeah. I'm having a hard time finding the gear, though. Yeah, you shift a lot. Oh, there's a little Archie. <laughs> oh, yeah, <thank> you. <laughs> yeah I, I end up, I shift a lot, but it's like, okay, is it second or third? Second or third? It's both. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm, I make... I'm shifting a lot, too. You getting used to the sand? A little bit. I still, it still makes me, you know, but I, I find it, it feels more grippy here. Or am I just doing better? I think you're just doing better. <laughs> oh, really? Because I actually I think it's sandy, like it's fi it's finer grit here. Oh, okay. It's all over the place. Yeah. I thought we were driving through glass, and this is desert quartz, which is, I guess, a kind of glass. But I thought it was like man-made glass, it's like broken bottles, but it's not. It's desert quartz. wasn't quite prepared for this steep descent. <laughs> so busy looking at the forest for the trees. But the trees for the forest, I guess, would be a better one. Yeah. Arches. What's that? Not worth it. I'm gonna take Joe Judgment. I gotta fly home tomorrow. <laughs> Well, it's now December when I'm editing this video, and this was back in March of 2014. And I was just talking with Joe the other day, and I am actually really glad that I waited so long to edit this video. I had forgotten how much fun I had in the Puerco in New Mexico. It was just a blast. This is actually the fourth day of riding hard um, on my trip. When I flew out to New Mexico, Joe and I were supposed to ride a little bit in the park, and we did. We hit a little whoop section to kind of teach me how to do some whoops because I don't have those where I live. No sand to speak of whatsoever. Not like this, anyway. And then we drove to Moab, and we rode three days straight. And so this is actually the fourth day of riding that Yamaha 350 while following Joe on that Kawasaki KDX 200. And so... I had a little reason to be tired. CDS always talks about how much energy I've had. Well, my energy was running low, although by the end of this video I, I end up 
getting my steam back. Could have done that the other day. That kickstand until I oiled it was or kick start. It was a pain in the butt. It was really tough to get out. What I'm referring to there is the kick start was always really hard to pull out. And I hit the rear brake and stalled the engine out. And so I just pulled in the clutch and pulled the kick start out and kicked it while moving. And so, you know, being able to do that on the fly, um, you can't do that if this kick starts really hard to get in and out. But Dr. Dual Sport in Moab gave me some two stroke oil that we put on that kick start. And we we're able to make it nice and smooth, you know. It's an 86 model. and. That bike is that I'm riding is actually older than Joe, <laughs> so it was. A, but I loved it. It was a great ride. Uh, just had so much fun on it. All engine, no brakes. If you look closely, you can really tell how windy it is because Joe will kick up some dust and it won't even get to me. It just gets blown off. <laughs> it's it's really windy. Oh yeah, here we go. Now, this area is just so fun. There's just tons of places, little playground spots. Uh, when I rode with Everride in St. George, he had the area called the Purple Roller Coaster. And, and this was, it's like the Purple Roller Coaster times 50. I mean, it was just so big, and it's, I mean, if you wanted to climb something, jump something, you could do that. If you wanted to go blasting hard on flat sand, you could do that. If you wanted to run through the whoops, you could do that. I mean, this is awesome. How you feeling? Good. It's windy. It is windy. I don't know if it's the best idea to do the, uh, the spines in the wind. Yeah, that's, that's fine with me. I... I was like, um, I was part of me really wanted to go up that hill, and you were like, and I think, no, I have a, I have to catch a plane tomorrow. <laughs> we don't want to push the luck, you know. Yeah, a lot of that stuff is just not worth it. Bikes in the park, though, that's disgusting. Yeah, it is. How's the, uh, how far away is that one where you went on the loop de doop so with the big square thing? Oh, the playground. It's on the other side of these cliffs here. We can go there if you want. It, it should not be windy there. It's like inside of a and bowl. bowl. Yeah. What's Joe thinking? Let's read Joe's mind. I've done it for the past little while. Yeah, good wheelie. Well, we were wrong. It was uh, inside of a bowl, yes, but the wind was coming from the direction that the bowl couldn't help us. So that area was very windy. Everywhere we went was windy. I would watch Joe's videos and I'd say to him every now and then, I'd say, oh, that looks like a really fun place to ride. I want to go there whenever I ride with you. Or, um, and he talked about the spines and we don't want to go there because of the wind, but I end up taking the lead here, and uh, I end up finding the spines <laughs> on accident. <laughs> and he was like, well, we better get off of this because it was so windy. But, you know, the spines is just like where you're looking at. We're up on top of these peaks and riding with the wind pushing you. It, it was pretty tr pretty tricky, but, you know, we, luckily we were okay. And we didn't go to the really pointy spines ones, and that's one I wanted to ride when I watched his videos. You can just hear the wind in the microphone. I'm not even moving. Oh, you, found the spot. Ah, you can feel the wind. It, it was pushing me. Uh, I don't like the it's really the strong. What? It's really strong. Sitting back on the seat, guy. Oh, that's nice. Front end light. That's a little tip that I learned. You need to uh, keep that front end light. You need some more traction in the sand. Sit more in the rear. 
you know, just stuff the desert guys know by intuition, and I do not. Scalpers, <laughs> scalpers in the puerco. But one thing we could have really used right now is a set of comm systems, and uh, you know that Bluetooth Cena or Shark or Uclear or whatever those things are. That would have made a big difference. Um, it was nice to stop and talk every now and then, so I could catch my breath. It would have been really nice to be able to communicate as we were riding. And that's something that I never had happen up to this point. Whoa, I thought he was going down. Now that I've had that chance to ride with CDS and Ever Ride and um, even Yama Joe when he came out to visit me. But riding with those guys and Goku Base and all them and being able to <laughs> talk while you're riding just makes it so much more enjoyable. Right here we're getting ready to come up on some sandstone and it's not like you know miles and miles of it like you see in Moab but it was pure sandstone it's pretty neat and being able to compare the two after being in Moab just the day before and then now riding here in the Puerco it's uh, it's pretty neat and there is some, a lot of Moab-esque type things and you need the same skills to ride on it. There's some steep descents, and then there's some, of course, you know, back like the other way. It's almost straight up in some of the areas. And I would have been very intimidated if I hadn't been in Moab just a few days before. But being out there now and following Joe around, it was like, woohoo! Like, check this one out. It's almost straight up, that little lip there at the top. But no big deal, because I'd, <laughs> I'd done it before in Moab. I think I found a new name for this thing. What? Lug. What? Lug. Lug? <laughs> I don't know, you tell me. Huh? Was there a trail down and you rode up there? Ah, uh, hang on, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> 